I was born in Orange Memorial Hospital in 1958, and at a lot of meetings when I give speeches, I'll ask uh, who was born in Orlando, and generally it's me and maybe two other people, but if it's a younger crowd under 30, then there's a lot, but if they're people 50 and older, there's not so many, but I always say that, you know, I was born here, it's my hometown, I love it. The rest of you that weren't born here, you moved here for some reason or another, and uh, if there was one word that I would describe, it's probably for opportunity. And it could have been educational opportunity, it could have been quality of life opportunity, it could have been job opportunity, um, but opportunity is a word that I think describes Orlando. Two weeks before I decided to run for mayor of Orlando, I never <laughs> had any idea I would ever be the mayor of Orlando. I had served in the legislature for 10 years, um, ran for attorney general, bad year to be a Democrat in a statewide race, and was, um, took a few weeks off. Bob Graham called me and asked me if I would come to D.C. and be his general counsel while he ran for president. So I had agreed to do that and was going to be moving to D.C. on a part-time basis the uh, first week in January. And right around Christmas time, Jeb appointed uh, then Mayor Hood to be Secretary of State in a city called a special election and my phone started blowing up, people saying, you've got to run for mayor, you've got to run for mayor. There were already, I guess, six, there eventually were seven other people, but there were six people that were anticipating Mayor Hood wouldn't run again and had already been campaigning for mayor at the time. So when I got in, I made number eight in a race, but the race was three weeks long. So it was pretty appealing to me at the time, and, and actually, uh, Pastor Sam Green, who is the pastor of the largest AME church on the west side, called me at 6 in the morning and um, said, you have to run. You're the one that can unite this city right now. So he kind of convinced me, and I talked it over with my family. But, you know, until that point, even having an idea I'd ever run for mayor, five weeks later I win the primary, and two weeks later I win the runoff, and I'm mayor eight weeks later. Having lived here for over 50 years. It's hard to describe the incredible change in just a few sentences. I think though the best way to put it would be it's a change of seeing a city grow from a small agricultural community to one of the great metropolitan areas in the world. I was really into sports and I'm still very much into sports. I played football and baseball most of my youth and in the summer times, I'd play in as many as three or four different baseball leagues. So I would say most of my free time was spent playing sports of one sort or another. In Orlando, I'd say my two favorite places, one has to be Lake Eola Park. And I think if you ask a hundred people that are from Orlando, probably 80 of them, that would be in their list of two. And then um, my other place would be a uh, a special place to me and I live on Lake Silver in College Park so my back porch or backyard on Lake Silver. Ronnie's restaurant and how many times do you get that? Every single time. <laughs> Every single one. I was guessing that and um, you know especially as a leader in the community it was a place where you would see blue-collar workers, you would see Famous people, you would see every type of political meeting. Um, when I was being recruited to run for the legislature, that's where the meetings were held. The leaders from Tallahassee would come down, we'd go to Ronnie's, and they had those relish trays that were out on the table, and the ornery waitresses, you know, you had to order exactly right, or you didn't get, get it right. What was your favorite thing to order at Ronnie's? Uh, that's a good question. I like breakfast stuff, so breakfast stuff and I especially like white fish so getting white fish there was good. Local boy loves and leads Orlando.